Alden. 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 Good morning, Alden School. May 5th, 2020. Mr. E here with another edition of Alden School Meeting. Thank you very much for joining me, and thank you to Jedi Master E for providing the Republic Report from yesterday. And thanks again to his guests, the Emperor, Chewbacca, and for some strange reason, the Big Bad Wolf. Thank you to those three for joining Jedi Master E on the Republic Report edition of Alden School Meeting. I thought that was a lot of fun. We're back here, though, for a regular edition of Alden School Meeting. We have a great tie of the day for you. We have birthdays and we have a question of the day, but how do we get started with Alden School Meeting? We start with the pledge. So if you'd all please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, you may be seated. Friends, got a brand new tie of the day for you today. I'll stand up so you can see it. Try to be still so you can see it. It's a gummy bear tie. I'm really excited about this one. You have never seen this tie at Alden School because I just got it as a present today from Mrs. Benoit. So thanks to Mrs. Benoit for this tie. It was a gift of congratulations for all the Rush t-shirts I have. She was very impressed and wanted to get me a congratulations present for that. So thank you, Mrs. Benoit, for my new gummy bear tie. All right, friends, question of the day comes from Piper. Thanks for this question, Piper. Piper asks, Dear Mr. E, what is your favorite TV show and what is your favorite song? All right, good question, Piper. Uh, for TV show, I think I talked about how Survivor is one of my favorite TV shows. Um, but I'll go ahead and name another one. Uh, that's more of a current TV show. Maybe my favorite classic TV show of all time is a show called The Dukes of Hazard. You should ask your dad about the show The Dukes of Hazard. That was like one of my favorite shows growing up. I can still remember like the anticipation of Friday nights at eight o'clock on CBS and just waiting for it to be, you know, 756, 757 and waiting for The Dukes of Hazard to come on because Back in those days, you had to watch TV when that show was on, and if you missed it, you missed it, and you were out of luck. Um, so things are different now. You can kind of watch whatever you want, whenever you want, but, oh, man, I could still remember that feeling and that, like, excitement of the Dukes coming on. So I'll say the Dukes of Hazard. And then for song, Piper, um, I know you well enough, and you know me well enough. Uh, it, you know a lot of Rush songs. Pick pick, pick a Rush song, and uh, and that'll be just fine. So thanks for the question, Piper. Here we go. It's the science verse today, guys. Last week, I had Leo read to you guys The Math Curse, which is a really cool book by John Sheska. And this is sort of a sequel called The Science Verse. Uh, really fun, cool poems and funny poems. Um, it's, a, it's a fun one by John Sheska. Again, science verse, cool artwork in here. Enjoy. All right. And take it away, Leo. Okay, friends, welcome to the Science Verse by John Sheska and Lane Smith. On Wednesday in science class, Mr. Newton says, You know, if you listen closely enough, you can hear the poetry of science in everything. I listen closely. On Thursday, I start hearing the poetry. In fact, I start hearing everything as a science poem. Mr. Newton has zapped me with a curse of science verse. Evolution. Glory, glory, evolution. Darwin found us a solution. Your mama is that shape, and your knuckles always scrape, because grandpa was an ape. Water cycle. It's raining, it's pouring, for H2O it's boring. Precipitation, evaporation, precipitation, evaporation, precipitation, evaporation, evening, night, and morning. Lovely. I think that I ain't never seen a poem ugly as a spleen. A poem that could make you shiver, like 3.5 pounds of liver. A poem to make you lose your lunch, 
tie your intestines in a bunch. A poem all gray, wet, and swollen, like a stomach or a colon. Something like your kidney, lung, pancreas, bladder, or even tongue. Why are you turning green, good buddy? It's just human body study. Twink. Twinkless, twinkless spot of black in the starry zodiac. Sucking in all matter and light, turning sunshine into night. Twinkless, twinkless, lost control. Now we're trapped in the black hole. Oh no, they got trapped in a black hole. Dinosaur. Once in first grade, I was napping when I heard a scary yapping. Frightful word worse than a slapping, worse than 20 T-Rex roars. Said our teacher, heartless creature, my class, you know, always explores 10 full weeks of dinosaurs. Pterodactyl, stegosaurus, on and on the same old chorus. Elementary stuff to bore us. No more, we beg, she ignores. Yes, she smiles, they were reptiles, then locks the windows, bolts the doors. Don't you just love dinosaurs? Every year the scene repeated. Third grade, fourth grade, we were greeted with that torture just completed. Yes, we've heard of carnivores. Still, the teachers changed no features. Still spoke those words that gave brain sores. This year's topic, dinosaurs. It's still a mystery, scientists say, why the dinosaur went away. And, but I know why they couldn't stay, and it was meteors. <laughs> it was creatures, yes, those teachers, who did the work of 50 wars and bored to death dinosaurs. So the teachers were so boring that they bored the dinosaurs to death. Interesting. Food chain. I've been working in the food chain all the live long day. In the middle of the food chain, I've got no time to play. Can't. Oh, God. Food chain. I've been working in the food chain all the live long day. In the middle of the food chain, I've got no time to play. Can't you see the green plants growing? That's energy, okay. Consumer eats up the producer. Predator eats prey. I'm trying to sing this, friends. Who's for... <laughs> who's for lunch today? Who's for lunch today? Don't you just wonder who's for lunch today? Predator or prey? Predator or prey, eat or be eaten, that's the only way. Gobble gookie. Twas fructose and the vitamins did zinc and dye, red number eight. All poly were the th thiamines and the carbohydrate. Beware the gobble gook, my son, the flavorings, the added C. Beware the serving size and shun the dreaded BHT. And as in folic thought I stood, the gobble gook with eyes ni nitrate came gluten through the dextrose wood, its extracts carbonate. Oh, can you slay the gobble gook, polyunsaturated boy? 3,000 calories, don't look, the sugars, fats, oh soy. Twas fructose and the vitamins did sink did zinc and dye red number eight. All poly were the thiamines and the carbohydrate. That has a lot of big words, my friends. Why scientists don't write nursery rhymes. Hey diddle diddle. Hey diddle diddle, what kind of riddle is this nature of light? Sometimes it's a wave, other times particle, but which answer will be marked right? M Mary had a little worm. She thought it was a chigger, but everything that Mary ate only made it bigger. 
It came with her to school one day and gave the kids a fright, especially when the teacher said, now that's a parasite. Jack be nimble. Jack be nimble, Jack be quick. Jack jump over the combustion reaction of O2 plus heat plus fuel to form CO2 plus light plus heat plus exhaust. Good night. Good night, sleep tight. Don't let the bed bug tick or louse, suck blood from you, hatch its eggs, and then develop the larva on you, all right? Scientific method at the bat. The outlook wasn't brilliant for my experiment that day. The only way to graduate was to come up with an A. So when my lab exploded and burned to blackish gunk, my chance of passing anything went titanic, you know, sunk. I sat and sadly watched the clock, cursed to be alive. It would take a miracle, no, make that too, to get me to grade five. Then I had a brainstorm, an idea so terrific, I just had to use those words from the method scientific. Friends, what John Sheska is referring to is the scientific method, but he switched around the words to make it rhyme. That's pretty smart. I grab my pen and get to work. You should see my look. I slowly write hypothesis, observation in my book. And now the class bell rings, and now I lose or win. With one mighty plop, I hand my lab book in. Oh, somewhere in some science class, hypotheses are made. Experiments are conducted. Kids move up a grade. Somewhere conclusions are concluded without a bit of doubt. But there is no joy in this lab. My results got me flunked out. So here, friends, we have a picture of a human skeleton putting a fork in a toaster, which you should never do at home or anywhere else. And all the different bones in the body are labeled, including foot, which I don't, which I'm not sure is a bone. I don't know, it might be. And metal, pointing at the fork. Skeletal study. There once was a man of science, not one of your mental giants. He decided to settle the question, does metal fix an electric appliance? No, it does not. Here shows the kid being held by a big hand with polka dots. You're it. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Catch a virus, watch it grow. Once it's got you, it won't go. Eeny, meeny, my, oh no! The virus got him, friends. Mini ha ha, or the atomic joke is on you. From the shining big sea water to the trees near Gitchgami, everything is made of atoms tiny things that you cannot see. Though I have just one small question, and I don't ask just to blame them. Scientists can't see these things, so, the so how the heck can they name them? Nucleus, they call the center, made of parts that they call protons, and more itty-bitty pieces, go ahead and call them neutrons. Flavored quarks, electrons, bosons, things could hardly get more doofy. I say we think up our own names, but let's make them way more goofy. Let us call the proton Wawa, the electron mano, my, Manomoni. Call the neutron the Wenona. Who will know? They are so teeny. Yes, then let us call the atom something new, like Hiawafa. That will be our really small joke. That will be our mini ha, ha And here, friends, it has translations of of these. Um, they look they look Hawaiian to me, but I 
I guess I shouldn't assume. So Wawa means the wild goose. Man Manomoni means the wild rice, means wild rice. Uh, Wenona means Hiawatha's mother. Um, Hiawatha is a, is hero of Henry Wadsworth Longfellow's poem of 1855. And Minnehaha is laughing water, wife of Hiawatha. Um, okay, cool. Okay. Looks like he's jump roping and he looks a little bit scared. What's the matter? Miss Lucy had some matter. She didn't know its state. She only had three choices, so tried to get it straight. She thought it could be liquid, quite possibly a gas. And if it wasn't solid, well, call me sassafras. Miss Lucy called the plumber. Miss Lucy called the cop. Miss Lucy called the egghead with a perfectly bald top. Liquid, said the plumber. Solid, said the cop. Gas, said the egghead with the perfectly bald, perfectly bald, perfectly bald, top, top, top. Bald is perfect. I would have to agree with that poem. It's just like a pit of darkness, and then there's these two little things. Amoeba. Don't ever tease a wee amoeba by calling him a her amoeba. And don't call her a he amoeba, or never he a she amoeba. Because whether his or hers amoeba, they too feel like you and meba. <laughs> I, 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 see, I, see what, I see what John Sheska did there. Changes. Oh no, do I have to sing again? I'm a little mealworm, short and wiggly. Here's my antenna, cute and jiggly. Now I am a pupa, squat and white. How did this happen? I'm a sight. Now I am a beetle, what is this? I really hate metamorphosis. "'Twas the night. "'Twas the night before anything, and all through deep space. "'Nothing existed, time, matter, or place. "'No stockings, no chimneys. "'It was hotter than hot. "'Everything was compressed in one very dense dot. "'Then out of the nothing there appeared with a clatter "'a fat guy with reindeer and something the matter. "'His nose was all runny. "'He gave a sick hack. "'Oh, Dasher, oh, Dancer, I can't hold it back. He huffled and snuffled and sneezed one a chew, and and <laughs> then like ten jillion volcanoes, the universe blew. That dense dot exploded, spewing out stars: Earth, Venus, Jupiter, Uranus, and Mars. Helium, hydrogen, the mountains and seas, the chicken, the egg, the birds and the bees. Yesterday's newspaper, tomorrow's burnt toast, protons and neutrons, your grandma's pork roast. The universe expanded. The guy said with a wheeze, Who will ever believe the world started by sneeze? So let's call it something much grander, all right? Merry Big Bang to all, and to all, and tight. Franz Gesundheit is a, is a thing you say when someone sneezes. Looks like he's right in the middle of the sun, and all the planets are orbiting around him. Astronauts stopping by a planet on a snowy evening. Which world this is, I do not know. It's in our solar system, though. I'm thinking that it might be Mars, because it has that reddish glow. But you know it could be Venus, and if that's true, then just between us. It might be wise to leave before any locals might have seen us. Could be Pluto, might be Neptune. Don't they both have more than one moon? I'm running out of oxygen. I'd better figure this out soon. Yes, space is lovely, dark and deep. For one mistake, I now do weep. In science class, I was asleep. 
In science class, I was asleep. 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 It's science class. I am asleep. Whack goes Mr. Newton's pointer on the blackboard. And that, my scientists, is the solar system. Test tomorrow on the planets. Class dismissed. Awake. Awake. I am awake. I'm thinking in regular sentences. I'm not rhyming anymore. I'm cured of my science verse. The... Oh, wait, no. The universe is beautiful, and life is just great until art class when Mr. Picasso says, do not think of this as a little art project. Your art project must be your whole life. The end. I hope you enjoyed that book, friends. Um, that I, I enjoyed that. Um, on the back, on the back cover, there's a lot of different sciency statistics. Very interesting. Okay, goodbye, friends. Birthdays, guys. Happy birthday to Philip and happy birthday to Lyndall on this May 5th. Happy birthday to both of you. All right, that's it for Alden School meeting for May 5th. Have a fantastic day. Look to your parents for dismissal instructions, and we will see you back here tomorrow. Have a good day, guys.